Good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to say that Amos just told me this morning, he called me to his office and told me this morning uh, of his decision not to run. And this is, not of, co this is of course not the time to, uh, to, su to summarize uh, his activities. As he said, he has another more than a year to continue as our president. All I can say that when he joined, he joined with a great, uh, really he wanted to contribute and he did contribute to the University of Haifa. He brought a lot of experience from industry and I know, and you could see it from his report, that he really loved and is loving the University of Haifa. So thank you, Amos. <laughs> so welcome everybody to our 43rd Board of Governors meeting. This occasion gives me the opportunity to share with you the highlights of our achievements over the last year as well as the challenges we face. I will try to put it in the context of a global trends in higher education. Let me let, first let us look at the academic achievement of the University of Haifa. 20 new faculty were hired this year, 2014-15, coming from prestigious institutions throughout the world, including Harvard, Yale, UC Berkeley, and others. These new and bright scholars work in different disciplines. We hope that they will find their academic home at our university, and we look forward for their, to see them prosper. 87 faculty members were promoted based on their high quality academic achievements as evidenced by their research, publications, and teachings. As for research activities during 2014, our faculty were engaged in 263 active research grants. We published 1,284 publications in peer-reviewed journals. 61 new scientific books were launched as well as 291 chapters. But research is not only publications and obtaining grants. It's also educating the new generations of leaders and innovators. Our faculty mentored last year 1,856 masters and 1,224 PhD students. The university received Last year, 67 new grants awards, and you can see them, you can see on the slide some of the major uh, awards that we got. Last year, we opened several new graduate programs in various fields. The list you see reflects the continued effort of the university to update curriculum and stay at the forefront of current directions in science. The development of these new programs is also responsive to the emerging needs and relevance to our society as a whole. Over the last three years, the total number of students at the University of Haifa remains stable, and, and we now stand at 17,860. However, the share of the graduate students has been increasing from 49% in 2010-11 to 52% today. This increase in number of graduate students is partially a result of opening the new programs I just described, which ex extend, expand study possibilities for our new students. Let me now, now turn to globalization of higher education. The OECD estimate that approximately 3.7 million students of higher education studied outside their home country in 2009. This number is estimated to increase to 7.3 million by 2025. From an academic perspective, the globalization of higher education has an important positive impact on students. This movement of students between countries leads to a richer diversity and offers an opportunity for dialogue between students of different cultural backgrounds. For the University of Haifa, this trend creates an opportunity to attract excellent students from other countries to come to study with us. This is important for the university community 
students, and faculty alike. Furthermore, the connection created between foreign students coming to study at the University of Haifa and our faculty and students could become a bridge for exciting future academic partnerships. Before we embarked on globalization of the university, international collaborations were primarily based on individual efforts. By making globalization a top priority on the institutional level, a different dynamic has evolved. I am very proud of what we have achieved so far. Let me give you a brief summary. By October 2015, the university will have 20 full international master's degree in English, offering over 200 courses annually taught in English. It is also important to know that all our international programs are open to Israeli students and the tuition fee for foreign students is set to the Israeli rate. We have succeeded in enrolling excellent and highly motivated students. The international school at the university provides the umbrella for this initiative and they have done a fantastic job, starting with the recruitment of new students, helping with admission, admission processes, finding doors, and providing many social and cultural activities. Together with the study abroad programs, we enroll over 1,000 international students, and their presence on campus is becoming noticeable. This initiative also opened up connections and new opportunities that we could not foresee when we first started. As you heard from the president, just a few weeks ago, 20 faculty members from the university visited the campus of East China Normal University in Shanghai to inaugurate the first research center of an Israeli university in Shanghai. We established connections with researchers in the area of neurobiology, business, education technology, and data science. This initiative will also open new funding opportunities for researchers in China. In March, we welcomed a delegation from the University of Texas A&M College Station, headed by the provost and including researchers in marine sciences, education, and political science. This visit was a culmination of efforts that were ongoing for more than a year. For the University of Haifa, leading the Mediterranean research in Israel, this collaboration presents a very exciting opportunity to join research of, top of the deep eastern Mediterranean water. In light of the recent finding of gas and oil of the shore of Israel, this research gained great national importance, and the long experience of Texas A&M in the area is invaluable. The idea is to establish a marine observatory system in the deep and shallow water, similar to the multiple such systems that exist in the Gulf of Mexico. During this visit of Texas A&M, we also initiated collaboration in web-based education technology, as well as study of Arabic. Our new intensive summer program in Arabic draws students who may have previously gone to study in neighboring countries, we offer these students a unique study environment and chance to interact with our multi-ethnic students' body and get personal experience of culture and language. Most importantly, what we start seeing now is an increasing in engagement from the university community in international collaborations with, few, with new proposal initiated, initiated independently by our faculty. Here are just few examples. A double degree, diploma, degree in diplomacy with the University of Warsaw. Workshop in art therapy in Africa and Southeast Asia. Training students from developing countries in child development. Joint workshop for students from Haifa and the University of Maryland, Baltimore in our flagship program global MPH summer program with the University of Georgia in Athens, workshop in nursing with students from Germany, the Czech Republic, and Norway, and the national security class visiting the NATO headquarters in Brussels. Now, while we work hard to increase our visibility globally, 
we do not forget that we are rooted locally and continue to strengthen our connection with the no local community. Our flagship program in the School of Social Work continues to draw students who go to the most disadvantaged neighborhoods in Haifa and work with the local community to develop future leadership to address social exclusion and poverty. The Faculty of Law offer an array of social action programs, including eight legal clinics for social change. The, the legal clinics are part of an innovative academic program that engages law students in promoting positive social change through the establishment of legal precedents, legislative change, and advocacy with public authorities. And in education, we launched the first school in Israel based on the Knowledge is Power program, the KEEP program. The, the program is designed to help students in educationally undeserved communities to develop the knowledge, skill, and characters needed to succeed in top quality high schools, colleges, and the competitive world beyond. In addition, we offer a master program in learning disabilities for Arab students. They are trained for work in the Arab school system to help in the diagnosis of treatment of learning disabilities. And last year, we opened a preparatory program in Nazareth with the hope to, to develop additional study programs in the future. I would like to now to turn your attention to the road ahead in the context of global trends in higher education. A recent, a recent report in The Economist demonstrated that constant increase worldwide in the number of young people seeking higher education. The enrollment ratio, that is the proportion of an age cohort enrolled in university, increased on average from 14% to 32% over the last two decades. And the number of countries with enrollment ratio of 50% or more rose from five to 54 during the same time period. That means that 54 countries now has an enrollment ratio of 50% or more. Students come to us to learn and significantly to improve their future professional prospects. And indeed, data from many countries show that the graduation premium the wage difference between those who have or do not have a degree remains high. So for the individual student, it is worthwhile to go to the university. From the perspective of society, higher education has been for many years the main contributor to the development of human capital, research, economic development, and social advancement. Thus. It is the interest of governments to invest in higher education, but this is contingent on high quality of the education that universities provide. So we see a trend of increasing demand for higher education from young people, but in reality of limited resources, this may conflict with the desire of high quality education. At the same time, there is increasingly fierce competition between universities to come, between university to become the best university, both nationally and internationally. And this competition drives institutions to focus on pro producing top quality research, drawing the best faculty and students. And this brings me back to the University of Haifa and the challenges ahead. I believe that we must strive to be the, in the top tier research universities and focusing our effort on improving our academic quality. Clearly, additional resources allocated to buildings, modern laboratories, better startup research packages for new faculty, and higher stipends for promising graduate students will improve quality and make us more competitive. However, with shrinking budgets, an alternative plan is called for. We are well poised at this point in time 
to embark upon new, a new challenge, making interdisciplinary research as a focal point of the university academic development. We have already identified, and Ami talked about it, we already identified a number of broad area of interdisciplinary research areas as a focus of excellence, including marine science, gerontology, psychobiology, and others. Teaming researchers and students across, in, across disciplines and, and specialties is a, a key to advance the understanding and find innovative solutions to complex real life problems. Cross disciplinary studies have been applied, for example, to work on poverty, inequality, and well being. However, much of this re research remains, remains fragmented and the intellectual barriers between the natural, social, and exact sciences ex ex subjects continue to be powerful. Study have shown that creating the platform that facilitate integration across disciplines lead to a better research output and eviden as evidenced by more publications and in higher quality journals. Declaring interdisciplinary research as a university-wide mission means that new mechanisms need to be created to transcend traditional barriers between disciplines. Training researchers and students across disciplines requires innovative teaching approaches. Policies that govern hiring, promotion, and allocation of resources must be adapted as well. Any university-wide change must start as a top-down initiative. But in order for it to succeed, as it, it has to gradually transform into a bottom-up process. It is also critically important to recognize that these processes take time and accomplishment requiring long-term commitment and persistence. To conclude, I believe we need to set clear long-term goals for the university and develop careful implementation plans to achieve them. It, looks, it took us five years with the globalization effort to be where we are now. And it, it, is, it is only the beginning. Surely it will take us a few more years of ongoing hard work to reach the goals that we have set. But we started. We need to continue to strive for academic excellence while staying acutely tuned to the changes around us in science, in technology, and in society. We must find the path to stay ahead of the game as it translates to academic research and teaching. I'm very proud of our academic achievements over the last year. We will continue to reach out to the best students here and abroad and hire top quality to our university, faculty to our university. We are working now with the deans on a five-year plan of a university academic development to be submitted to the Council of Higher Education. We will set the goals, outline their approaches, and allow time for these processes to mature and come to fruition. This plan, once implemented, will surely work to strengthen our growing reputation and prestige. Thank you very much.